Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back again to cancel half a line. Nor all your tears wash out a word of it. Or put it this way. You can never erase nor rewrite what has been inscribed in the book of your life. Or can you? What are you doing here, Walter? I had to see you, Rita. I had to see you. Don't you know it's dangerous? Well, Rita, after all, we killed him. Oh, you've got that all wrong. You killed him. No. No, we both planned it. We both did it. Your fingerprints are on the gun. Rita, you were there. It was your idea. What was my idea? Walter... I don't know what you're talking about. Our mystery drama, The Gift, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. laws against it, both man-made and divine. Practically all civilized and most uncivilized societies as well prohibit it. So then, how do you account for the fact that murder has flourished since the dim red dawn of history? Murder by individuals, murder by groups, murder at wholesale, murder at retail, but murder everywhere and enough to spare. We're in a pretty little cafe lounge. A man and a woman are at a table holding hands. They seem to be very much in love. And yet, as we listen, the very first word we hear is murder. Now, what brings this on? We plan to do it, don't we? Of course, darling. But we don't have to talk about it. What do you mean we don't have to talk about it? Well, what I mean is, we don't have to talk about it anymore. Rita. Everything we have to say has already been discussed. It only remains to be done. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe... Walter, are you beginning to have second thoughts? I, I don't know. Well, for your information, you were the first to mention it six months ago. Didn't you say... If only Dennis weren't around. Well, yes, but that didn't what mean... What did it mean? You have a way of cutting... I have a way of cutting through the nonsense. Of cracking the shell to get at the meat. Well, do you want to call it off? Do you? Walter, the time has come for you to take a stand and to stay there. Suppose we get caught. <sighs> We're going through all that again. Oh, well, it's something to think about. It was something to think about. It was one of a great many problems and dangers, but we considered each one of them. Arrive at a decision and put them all behind us. Yes. Well, there's no guarantee we'll get away with it. Does it have to be done today? Will it be easier tomorrow? Oh, I guess you're right. No. We're right. This is being done by the two of us. Yes. It's five o'clock. Time to go. I, I don't see the waitress around. We'll have to wait. Just leave for... a $10 bill on the table. That'll more than cover it. Uh, re- 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 I'm uh... leaving now, Walter. With you? Or without you? Ah, oh, hello, dear. And Walter. Dennis, darling? Just in time for cocktails. 
Oh, I know how negative you feel about classical music, Walt. Well, I, I don't exactly... You've got a tin ear, that's your problem. <laughs> well, turn the thing off, Rita Angel, whilst I pour us each little libation here. No, 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 da darling, you, you turn it the other way. That's louder. Oh, now, Rita, really, it's enough to blast your eardrums. Now. Now. Walter, now what? Walter! Hey, what? What'd you get? What are you going to do with a gun? You have to do it. Oh, no. What was a dog? I'm sorry, Mrs. Holland. I... I'm all right. Now, in your own words, can you tell us what happened? Well, Lieutenant Savage, I've already described... Oh, I, I, I know, Mr. Powers, but another eyewitness report of the same event usually adds some detail that we... I, uh, I don't mind, Lieutenant. I want to help as much as I can. Thank you. As uh, Walter, uh, Mr. Powers said, we came into the apartment at... Well, it must have been about, oh, 5.15. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis was uh, listening to his music in the study. I recently bought a painting, a Faraday landscape. Uh, have you ever heard of him? Uh, yes, Mrs. Allen. Oh, then you know. Um, I had it hung in the living room. Walter hadn't seen it yet, so he and I went inside and... Uh... Yes, Mrs. Allen? Well, you know how you can get lost in a Faraday landscape. So uh, we must have been looking at it for all of ten minutes. Then we went back to the study and... And... Uh... Would you care for a drink of water, Mrs. Holland? No. Uh, no, I... Uh... Uh, we uh, saw Dennis lying on the floor. He was very still and you could see that dark stain of blood on his shirt over his heart. You knew. You, you could tell that he was... And uh, what else did you see? What else did I see? Mm. Oh, not very much. Uh, nothing, I'm afraid. Well, did you notice that the... Um, oh, oh, what did you call it, Mr. Powers? Uh, the Tacitor Collection, Lieutenant. Ah, that's it. The Tacitor Collection. Uh, did you notice that it was gone? I'm afraid the only thing I really saw was my husband lying dead. I tried to close my eyes against it, Lieutenant. Now, as I understand it, your husband had these coins called the Tacitor Collection. Yes. Uh, they were 12 English gold sovereigns minted in 1662 by King Charles II uh, to honor one of his friends, Lord Tacitus. Uh-huh. And what was this collection worth? Oh, it had been insured for $100,000. And your husband wanted to sell it? Yes. Why? Dennis was a mercurial person filled with sudden whims subject to unpredictable moods. He was always buying, selling, changing his mind. It was all part of his charm. And where was the collection usually kept? In a vault. Then how was it he had these valuable coins in the house? The word was out. You know, among collectors and in the trade. People were coming to look. Hmm, well, isn't it usual to sell these things at auction? Or to turn them over to a dealer? Oh, Dennis did things his own way. He wanted to be sure that the buyer would be someone who could appreciate the meaning of the collection. Then uh, Dennis was home all day. Oh, yes. He was expecting buyers. At about, uh, oh, three, I, I went out for a walk and I, I, I ran into Mr. Powers here. Mm. Uh, we stopped for a drink and then decided to go home, pick up Dennis for dinner at the theater. You came home. Now, uh, you remember seeing the collection on his desk? Yes, I... Oh, I'm sure I did. It, it would have to be there, because if he'd already sold it, he'd have said so. Now, you went into the other room to look at the painting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were there for ten minutes. Now, during these ten minutes, someone came in. How would that person enter? The only way is through the front door. Hmm. Well, he'd have to ring a bell. The door locks automatically and there's no sign of forced entry. You didn't hear a bell? No. Well, you see, he had his music going. It, it was very loud. Uh -huh. 
And this same someone then shoots your husband. You didn't hear a shot? No. And you didn't either, Mr. Powers? No. As she said, the music was going full blast in the next room. Mm. Well, thank you, Mrs. Holland. Is that all? Yes, that's all. Uh, Lieutenant Savage. Mm. Dennis Holland was my closest friend. He was also a fine human being. His murderer must not go unpunished. We'll do what we can. Uh, Tom, Eddie, got your pictures? You ready? All right, let's leave. Oh, goodbye, Mrs. Holland, Mr. Powers. Oh, don't, don't bother. We can let ourselves out. Rita, hmm? we got away with this. This detective bought the story. I could tell he bought the story. Because we made it easy for him. A simple story. No frills. He had the coins on the desk. We were in the next room. Someone comes in to buy. Kills him. He's got the music going. We don't hear a thing. We come back. It's all over. Beautiful. And do you want to know why? It's a good story. Because it's built on a platform of fact. Each one can be readily verified. First, Dennis did own the passenger collection. Second, he did want to sell it. He'd taken out ads. Third, he did bring it home from the vault. The clerk would remember. Fourth, people were coming in and out all day. Fifth, I said we went into the living room to look at a new Faraday painting. Oh, there is a new Faraday painting. Sixth, we said we couldn't hear anything because the music was so loud. Oh, the neighbors will be glad to tell the police how constantly they complained about that loud music. Uh, wait a minute. Yes? Wait. Good Lord. W- what is it? Should we be talking like this? Like what? Should we be saying what we're saying? It just occurs to me. There were two or three detectives poking about the place while Lieutenant Savage was talking to us. What were they doing? Well, they were taking pictures. Looking for fingerprints and, well, anything that might serve as a clue. Ah, that's what they'd like us to think they were doing. How do you know they weren't planting secret microphones? Uh, Whatever for? To record this very conversation. Oh, well, if they did it, they did it. Then you admit they did it. Oh, come on, Walter. It's so far-fetched. Is anything far-fetched today? Look, a man is murdered... The police automatically suspect his wife and his friend. Uh, Not when there's a $100,000 robbery. The robbery story is our story. Now, look, we have a lot to do. First, hide the gun and the coins up on the farm. Second, like a true and loyal friend, make the funeral arrangements, will you? But before you do that, take me home to my mother's and then you can return to your place and I'll call you. music coming from? From a record player. A record player? But I don't have a record player. I bought you one. You bought... De- Dennis. Yes. Dennis. But you're dead. You, you have to be dead, Dennis. You're dead and yet you're... You're standing here... That's a pretty good declarative sentence, isn't it? You're dead, and you're standing here. It consists of two independent clauses. And you would think that one negates the other. Well, grammar is grammar, and murder is murder. But surely in this case, something has to give. Give me a few minutes of breathing space, and I shall return shortly for that, too. basic drawback of being dead is that it lasts forever. This bit of wisdom was uttered by an anonymous character 
in a forgotten novel by a completely undistinguished writer named T. Presley McClellan. However, it does seem to have captured what was always considered a fundamental human truth. Are we about to discover a new vision? At 5.15 p.m., Mr. Walter Powers shoots and kills his best friend, Mr. Dennis Holland. At 9 p.m., that same evening, Mr. Walter Powers returns to his apartment. And who is sitting there, listening to a Beethoven symphony? Why, Mr. Dennis Holland. Dennis, you... I'm here. Start with that. You're dead. Well, who knows that better than you, Walter? You killed me. But... But you're here. Obviously. But you can't be here if I killed you. uh, Unless unless you're imagining it. Yes. Yes, that's it. It's all in my imagination. If it's your imagination, how do you account for the music? I can't account for it. Turn the damn thing off. If you say so, Walter. But still, you must account for it. You know you don't own a record player. Did you subconsciously go out and buy one? Why would I buy one? Because you're now in the hands of your conscience. Remorse. What I did, I would do again. It's just that I have to expect a few bad moments. I think I see you. But you do see me. I'm here. The record player proves it. If I'm just a creature of your guilty imagination, then how do you account for the player? And maybe you needed it to help the illusion, eh? But the fact is, it's here. How did it get here? Well, I must have gone out and bought it myself. When? You spent the afternoon with Rita. You killed me at exactly 14 minutes after 5. You were at the apartment with the police and one thing or another till 8. Then you had to take Rita to her mother's and... Here you are at nine o'clock, with every minute accounted for. Yeah, but still, I no, don't... no, 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 Walter. The record player is here because I brought it, and I brought it as a gift. A gift? I owe you a present. For what? For killing me. What are you saying? If you hadn't done it, I'd have had to do it myself, and I just wouldn't be able to summon the courage. So let me begin by thanking you. Yeah, I don't understand. I was very sick, Walter. The doctor said I'd be lucky to live a year. Oh, I didn't know. Well, I just found out. Lucky to have a year. And then he said in a few weeks there might be some very intense pain. Then you would have died. Yes, I would have died anyway. But in terrible agony. That's one reason I thank you. One reason? Well, the other is I, uh... I'm broke. You were broke? Busted, cleaned out, washed up. Why do you think I was selling the Tacita collection? I don't know. I thought you were bored with it. Oh, never. It had to go to meet my debts. In about four or five months, the truth about my financial juggling would come out. I'd be disgraced. There I'd be, deathly ill, stone broke, and under indictment. You saved me from that, Walter. I thank you. That's what I came back to tell you. Yeah, but the, 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 the dead cannot come back. You know, I used to think that myself. But the dead do come back all the time. It's just that so many of the living are too blind, too insensitive to see them, to feel them, to hear them. I hear you. I see you so clearly. But it has to be my imagination. I'll turn this on. Listen. That's not your imagination. I want you to develop a taste for it, Walter. You'll thank me. What's going to happen? I'll go back where I belong. Where you belong? I don't belong here. I just have some unfinished business, that's all. Unfinished business? I have to take care of you. Me? You're my best friend. Look at what you did for me. But I murdered you. I murdered you in cold blood. You had that look in your eyes just before I pulled the trigger. 
Do you think I'll ever forget that look? Oh, you were always so melodramatic, Walter. As I fired, there was a brilliant flash. Oh, you're telling me. I thought I'd go blind. For a second, your eyes became very bright. And then they started to become darker and darker. As the light in them flickered and slowly faded. Then all the light went out of them. I was dead. Yes. That's exactly what it feels like. All the light goes out of you. And you're lost in a dark void. I'm sorry, Dennis. Oh, you're not to blame. She put you up to it. I know she did. She knows how to drive a man wild. Well, she'll grow tired of you. And after a while, you'll sense it in her eyes. <laughs> her restless eyes. Already she's planning for your successor. Now, w- wait a minute, Dennis. Unconsciously. You... After all, she hasn't even met him yet. But she will. One day. And then she'll be prepared. What are you driving at? What did you do with the gun and the coins? I hid them. Why didn't you destroy them? Because she said to hide them. Hide them? Hide them where? Up at the farm. What for? So she can have that gun handy in case she'll need it? Why would she need it? Well, she needed a gun for me, didn't she? Are you are you oh, saying... Oh, she may not use it to shoot you. She'll bring that gun to the police. To police? Do you know what she'll say? Come on, Dennis. What can she say? She's in it up to her neck. Which is why she wants to get out. But what can she say? She is such a resourceful, inventive, creative woman. Can't you imagine what she could say? Think, Walter. Think. Listen to me, Lieutenant. He did it. Walter Powers did it. Are you accusing Walter Powers, Mrs. Holland? Protect me. Don't let him kill me. He's insane. Walter's insane. I'll tell you everything. We came back to the apartment. Walter hated Dennis. He... He shot Dennis. Shot him in... Cold blood. Uh, just a minute, please, Mrs. Holland. Walter wanted those coins. That cash of the collection. He shot Dennis, and he forced me to go along with the story, or else he'd kill me. You don't know what he's like. Mrs. Holland, have you got any sort of proof? Proof? I know where he hid the coins. And the gun. Could she play a scene like that? Is Rita capable of it, Walter? But she loves me. Oh, she also loved me. It comes and goes with her. Why cling to a dying tree? Why treasure what can no longer blossom? Those words. Those words. How would I know those words? Oh, foolish, Walter. Didn't she also speak them to me one day? She whispered them on a sailboat. We were running before a freshening breeze. A long, honey-colored hair was flying straight back in the wind. A wind that also held her shirt taut against that beautiful, curving line of her body. She didn't make you believe anything in a moment like that. Tell me, where and when did she whisper those words to you? That can't be real. You can't be real. Listen to the music again, Walter. Only I could have brought it here. It proves this is real. It proves I'm here to help you. Here to save you. Save me from what? From her? Is that it? Yes. Because she'll want to get rid of me one day? Right. No, there's something you forget. Sure, there was another guy before you, and she ditched him for you, and she got rid of you for me. And you say my turn's coming up. Exactly. Exactly. Well, maybe it isn't. Maybe there's something you can't face up to. Maybe you and how many other guys before you simply weren't man enough for her. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Mr. Macho. All right, let's assume that's true. Then your whole theory flies out the window. Only to walk in again through the door. That little scene in the police station. What little scene? You mean that imaginary little episode? It will have to take place, you know. Why? Because you say so? Because logic demands it. What logic? The logic of reality. A man is shot to death. 
In the house at the time are his wife and his best friend. Now, what the investigating detective asks himself at the very beginning is, are these two having an affair? I would say he's convinced they are. Why? Because he's trained. His experience teaches him to look for those things. But how can he tell? People in love give themselves away in any one of an infinite number of little things, Walter. A glance, a gesture, a smile, a frown. Who knows? And so we begin with your Lieutenant Savage. You think he's a dull, plodding policeman. Don't sell him short. Lieutenant Savage, what do you think he's doing right now? Well, how would I know? You can picture it. He's in his office. At his desk. Uh, Lieutenant Savage. Oh, yes, Inspector. I'm doing the report right now. Well, Dennis Holland had these coins worth about 100000 A crook could have come in, killed them, and grabbed them. So we have to run a net among dealers, collectors, and so forth. On the other hand, we got the wife and the best friend. Now, they're in the next room while a thirty-eight caliber revolver goes off. And they claim they didn't hear a thing. Well, that's what they say. Uh, I, I think I get a little bit of a click there. Well, I want to give it a play. Yeah, I'll get right on it. And he's on it this very minute. What'll he discover, Walter? What'll he discover? Nothing. Are you trying to tell me there was nothing? We were very discreet. Discreet? Nobody knows about us. Nobody? Let's check that out. We are now in the area of routine. Basic police routine. The police are experts when it comes to routine. And if it's a crime that can be solved by the use of routine, the police crack it every time. I... I, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, you wish you didn't know what I was talking about. Tomorrow morning, Lieutenant Savage is going to ring Rita's doorbell. And do you know what he's going to ask her? How could I know? Well, it's a question he couldn't ask her this afternoon. She was too upset. But it's a question both you and she can very well expect. What, uh... What is the question? Well, you should know. It's the question that marks the beginning of the routine. The beginning of the routine. The end of which leads to a lifetime in a cell or just a fleeting moment on a scaffold. Neither is a prospect which actually pleases. And what is this question that can give birth to all the woes and troubles that threaten to engulf Walter Powers, not to mention Rita Holland. Well, we'll give birth to Act Three shortly. Whoever it was that said, we are a world of strangers, we see each other dimly as flickering shadows in a darkened room, may have had something. What do we really know about the next fellow? Walter Powers and Dennis Holland were lifelong friends. And yet, did Walter know he'd be doing Dennis a favor by killing him? What question is Lieutenant Savage going to ask? Can't you picture it? He will ring the bell. Rita will answer the door. He will apologize for disturbing her. He will say... I just have a few questions, Mrs. Holland. Yes? Now, you said you were at home with your husband till 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, hmm? uh, 3 o'clock. Uh, yes, that's uh, about right. And then you went out for a walk. Yes. And then you said... Uh, now, now, I don't remember whether you said you met Mr. Powers or you ran into Mr. Powers. Oh, well... Oh, it wasn't a set appointment or anything. It, it just that's the way it would happen every day. I see. Now, uh, you said you went in for a drink. Well, yes, sir. We generally would. Where? Where do we go for a drink? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, um, that little place just off the square. Maletti. I see. Maletti. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. A lieutenant. Yes, Mrs. Holmes? Is that uh, important? It's just 
Routine. Routine. That's the first routine question. Now, Walter, what do you suppose will be the second? I... I don't know. But where do you suppose he's going to ask it? Milletis, of course. Milletis. Milletis? You would sit at the piano bar, wouldn't you? Yes. And Jerry, the piano player, knew you, didn't he? I, uh, yes. What's he going to tell Lieutenant Savage? How, how would I know? Ah, oh, now you know. This is a murder case. Jerry is not about to lie to a cop. Jerry's going to tell Lieutenant Savage exactly what he saw. And you know what he saw. Well, Lieutenant, I mean, they'd uh, come in most every afternoon for a happy hour, you know? Uh, what would they do? What would they do? Mm-hmm. Well, they'd have a couple of drinks and listen to me play the piano. I mean, what were they supposed to do, huh? Did they hold hands? Well, did you ever see them hold hands? Now, that's a direct question. Uh, yeah. How often? Every time they were here alone? Well, I don't know. I don't count. But they did hold hands. Hmm? Oh, yeah. But that ought to mean anything. It could just be friendly. Did he ever put his arm around her? Yeah, he might have. Once or twice. Uh-huh. They ever kiss? Maybe. Once or twice. All right, Jerry. That's good enough. I'll let you off the hook. Now. Now, that's where the routine pauses, gathers momentum, and moves ahead. So, what do you suppose Lieutenant Savage is going to do now? He knows that you and Rita are having an affair. He has no proof. Oh, he knows it in his bones. Walter, he has the building blocks. All he has to do is put them in place. So, he's going to ask questions. Many questions of many people. Think of all the people who knew about or suspected that you and Rita were having an affair. Think in particular of Millicent Weber. Millicent? Ah, the name drains all the color from your face. And rightly so. Now, when in the course of his routine investigation, Lieutenant Savage talks to Millicent Weber, what do you suppose she's going to tell him? Would I love to be there to hear it? But you know perfectly well. Just exactly what she'll say. I would rather not discuss Walter Powers, Lieutenant. Uh, Mrs. Weber, this is a murder investigation. And what you want to know from me is, was there anything between Walter and Rita Holland? Yes, ma'am. Well, let me say that both sometime. I read the story in the paper about poor Dennis's murder, how a robber shot him. Huh. I don't believe a word of it. You don't? No. And you don't either. Walter and Rita were having an affair. And you would testify to this in court? No. But only because my testimony would be prejudicial. You see, I have reason to detest Walter Power. May I ask the reason? He was engaged to my younger sister. He broke it off. To run around with that married woman. Doris took it very hard. I tried to tell her she was better off out of it. But she was a very romantic child. She was at the beach last summer. There was an accident. She drowned. I think she did it deliberately. That's all I can tell you. Do you know of any way we could prove Rita Holland and Walter Powers were having an affair? No. Now, wait. Of course I do. The Riverview Motel. I wanted to expose him. I had him shadowed. The detective reported that Walter and Rita had spent several nights there. I presented the evidence to Doris. Yes? It, uh, that was the end of things between them. But it was also the beginning of the end of everything for Doris. The Riverview Motel. Thank you, Mrs. Webber. The Riverview Motel, Walter. That's what Millicent will tell him. And how many desk clerks, chambermaids, and cocktail waitresses will remember the two of you together there? What are you trying to convince me of? Well, that you are getting closer and closer to that little scene in the police station where she sells you down the river. Oh, you don't know how much she really loves me. 
She would never do that. Well, she may have no choice, Walter. The routine. It's become a juggernaut. It threatens to ride right over her. Now, Lieutenant Savage is going to go back to her. Now, Lieutenant Savage is armed. He's ready. And you can just picture what he's going to say to her. Yes. You're crazy. You mean you can't picture it, Walter? You mean he isn't going to ask her? Mrs. Holland, are you having an affair with Walter Powers? Am I... What? Shall I repeat the question? How dare you? But you have no right to ask such an insulting, slanderous question. Mrs. Holland, if I were to go to the Riverview Motel... Riverview Motel? Would I find witnesses among the personnel who could testify that you and Mr. Powers engaged a room there quite often? Would I? Lieutenant, listen to me. He did it. Walter Powers. He did it. So you see, Walter, the scene. We are ready for the scene. You don't believe it. I... I, I don't believe any of this. I, I can't. I'm going crazy. I have this hallucination that you're here. That a dead man is talking to me. That a man I killed is here in this room talking to me. Oh, if only it were an hallucination. All of this is unreal. All of this is fear. And Phantom, all Rita and I must do is not lose our head. She has to send you down the river, Walter. No, no, no. You're, you're not real. All I have to do is shut you out of my mind. I'm real, Walter. It's a reality you can't understand. Yes. In this room, however, there is a reality that you can understand. It takes up room. You can stub your toe against it. You can touch it. Turn the switch on, you can hear it. The record player, Walter. I brought you the record player. You left the house at three this afternoon. It wasn't here, was it? No. Well, I keep telling you, I brought it as a gift so that you would believe me. But it's you... the finest you can buy, Walter, exactly like the one I have, or I had in my house. You see? Look at it. Listen to it. Only I could have brought it, yes? E yes. Place yourself in my hands. I'm the only one who can help you, really. She mustn't play that scene in the police station. She's capable of it, isn't she? Isn't she? Yes. One way or another, one day or another, you have to be killed. Just as I had to be killed. Kill her first. Well... No. You have to. But that'll surely... I, I, I mean, the police... I'll be arrested for murder. No, you won't. Well, what do you mean, I won't? Walter, I'm dead. Which means I see things. Kill her. You won't be caught. Right now, she's asleep all alone at her mother's house. Go there quietly. Kill her. Quietly. No one will know. Kill her. You'll get away with it. Trust me. Believe me. Be believe you? Isn't this music proof that you can believe me? Yes. Yes. of the night? I threw it off the bridge. Good. No one will ever find it. What happens now? Nothing. The police probe and pry and poke around. But proof? None at all. Sit tight. Sit tight. Sit tight. And enjoy the music. Who could that be? Why don't you answer it? Oh, 
Hey, this is a break. I'm glad you're home. Well, uh, who, who are you? Well, who do you think I am? I'm glad you're enjoying the set. <laughs> maybe you want to buy one? Huh? Hey, maybe that's not such a bad way to advertise. What are you talking about? Well, this dame wanted to give her husband a surprise birthday present in apartment 4E. Uh, she bought him this here record player. Oh, what, what, what are you saying? Only that <laughs> stupid salesman at the store wrote down 3E on a ticket instead. <laughs> The super let me in here earlier. No, no, you're, you're making a mistake. You... Well, that's what I'm saying. I made a mistake. This, this record player, it's, it's, it's a, a gift from Dennis. Oh, look there. Uh, leave me explain it again. Uh, Dennis, tell him. Tell him. You see, this woman calls me up. Dennis. Hey, she's having a pit. Where's that record player? I paid for that record player. Dennis. Yeah, I said, lady, I delivered that record player. I installed it in apartment 3E, like the ticket says. Hey, Dennis, Dennis, why don't you tell him? 3E, she yells. It's 4E. Please, tell him, Dennis. So, if you don't mind, I'll just have to unhook this. Well, no, wait, 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 what are you doing? What am I doing? Well, that's mine. Well, see, I just explained. Dennis gave it to me. Are you nuts? D Dennis told me... It would be all right. Look, do I have to get a cop? Dennis said nothing could happen to me. Even after you killed her, he said, nothing can happen to you. Dennis, Dennis knows. No, he, you, you know how Dennis knows? Well, go, go ahead, ask me. Uh, 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 how, how does Dennis know? Uh, because uh, uh, Dennis is dead. Oh. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I see, I, I, I see. Well, look, I, I must have made a mistake. Yeah, of course you did, yes. It, it, it was Dennis who brought me this wonderful record player. I... Oh, sure, sure, of course you did, pal. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, why, um, well, why don't you just, uh, excuse me, excuse me. The end of the story? It writes itself. That poor, frightened sound technician. Can't you see him hailing a police cruiser or making a frantic call from the nearest phone booth? Can't you see the police arrive and take our friend Walter into custody? And you know perfectly well that poor Walter has had it one way or another. It's probably a cell in an asylum for the rest of his life. If he ever recovers, it'll be a cell in a prison. Which would you choose? Choose neither. I'll be back shortly. Can the dead, do the dead, ever come back? Of course they do. All the time. They come back in what we do, in what we say, and even in what we are. They are gone from our sight... Their voices are still, and we see them and hear them so clearly sometimes. Who was it that said, to be remembered is to live forever? Our cast included Ralph Bell, Robert Dryden, Evie Juster, and Sam Gray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. <laughs> A preview of our next tale. Prima Donna Imperial Opera of Warsaw. Contralto retired from the stage, living now in London. Uh, and now your majesty, as I understand, became entangled with this young person, wrote her some compromising letters, and is now anxious to get these letters back. Precisely so. Mm -hmm. But how did you... Was there a secret marriage? Oh, of course not. Legal papers? Certificates? None. But well, then I failed to follow your majesty. If this person should produce her letters for blackmail or other purposes, how is she to prove their authenticity? There is the writing. To forgery. My private note paper. Stolen. My own seal. Imitated. My photograph. Bought. We were both in the picture. Oh, dear. That is very bad. Your Majesty has indeed committed an indiscretion. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by x -Lax. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>